That's James's dessert. It's a little pumpkin treat on top of nasturtium leaves and a nasturtium bloom. And that's James's dinner, which is also a treat if you ask me. And uh, I'm going to talk about whitetail, which I gave top of the stack. Then the dark red and dark place. And the art of the crime actually isn't the bottom of the stack. It's, I've already reviewed it, but I'm going to talk about that last episode because I didn't talk about it before. So, that's that. And I'm going to start off by reading a poem that I wrote today um, called Dirty Reparations. I don't know how people will feel about it, but here it is. That morning, when a deck thief stole my clothes, I found a bag of clothing left behind. Returned? Or just forgotten there? Who knows? But either way, it sure felt good to find my clothing in that sneak thief's bag just then. And doing laundry never felt so good. To be reclaiming what was mine again. It'd sure be nice if everybody could experience that joy I felt that day when folding up my freshly laundered clothes. It's possible that native thieves here may just feel that way when stealing, but who knows? They're taxmen out collecting in the night. The moccasins that held my feet have been reclaimed by blood. Perhaps their theft felt right. My conscience and my laundry both are clean. That's my poem. You know, what? Um, there is this idea amongst Marxists that they're ill that uh, the violence and theft and stuff like that in certain minorities is uh, kind of like a vigilante reparation. That's interesting. Because uh, they're much more violent against each other. Yeah. Anyway, it's my poem. You can think what you want of it. That's just what I felt like writing this morning. Well, I write, wrote a whole bunch of stuff, actually. Most of my stuff was quite pleasant. Anyway, White Tail. Now, all of these movies that I showed um, seem um, kind of homemade. They, they don't seem That could be bad, it could be good. Well, you know what, I, I like seeing a lot of things like that. I, I like seeing the low budget stuff because honestly, it makes me feel like there should be so much more of it coming out. And that's good to have more of it coming out, right? I don't necessarily think the this art form should be just for wealthy people to have a monopoly on it. It, I mean, anybody can turn on their their. Honestly, this one here seemed like it was filmed almost with a cell phone. It, um, so you could make a movie with you could make one with a cell phone, I'm sure, and somehow market it if you felt like doing that. Um, we should be the first to do it. There's probably people who've done it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Whitetail. So this one was a little longer than I expected it would be. It's 119 minutes long. So that's that's a little longer than a feature length. Traditional movie, it's an hour and a half. But um, I enjoyed it. There's a, a fair amount of violence here. Um, they... It's about a, a family who went hunting, and they ended up finding um, one man who'd been shot in the gut, and he had a bag of cash. Oh my gosh, what's with this, right? And so, things go terribly wrong. Shot in the gut and dead? No, not dead oh. yet. Okay. But, um, anyway, it has a an autistic. The, the son is autistic, and he can't look people in the eye, right? So he has his father's wanting to take him out to hunt, so he can look through the scope at something and, and be able to. But he can't do that. It's, it's too hard for him. And anyway, so the autistic son is the one who's left to come to the rescue. So I don't know. I liked it. It was, uh, it was actually pretty well acted. 
the dark red. I think I've reviewed this one before. I wanted to say I would have given it a higher rating in the stack, but honestly, the thought of um, a schizophrenic woman getting all gun trained and going out to hunt down some people who she thinks are, have wronged her or whatever, that, that's kind of a frightening concept for me. So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that just did it. I'm not sure. But it's, it's a movie worth watching. You have nothing to do. Whatever. If you're writing poetry. I wrote a lot of poetry while, re while looking through these movies. You can do a lot of other things while watching movies. You don't have to sit and watch them. Unless you're watching a subtitle thing, then you're kind of stuck, right? Ah, so, A Dark Place. This one got the bottom of the stack. And it's not the story. It's actually a pretty exciting story. This one, again, seemed a little bit long. 114 minutes. But um, the acting, eh, not so good. I mean, I don't know if it maybe was the camera work. Maybe there weren't enough um, close angles with feeling. or I, I don't know. I don't know what did it, what made it the bottom of the stack. But something, I, something was not quite right about it for me, and this, it wasn't the story. Because, like I said, the story is quite interesting. And I missed part, like I can't, my TV is a little um, Disney uh, pink TV that um, has a small screen. So whenever they show, like, cell phone texting, I don't know what they're saying, really, right? So, yeah. So anyway, uh, I missed some of the story that way. And, well, at first I probably missed some of that story because I was probably um, writing out poetry or whatever. And then I realized, oh, there's so much silence. Why is the silence, right? So I might have missed it that way too. But I, I did read a little bit of the text, so I did understand some things, like um, the uncertainty about uh, the situation that the young woman was in. I, I understood where she was coming from that way, but I I don't know um, what ends up happening. There's some violence that ends up happening, and I think it might have been explained in the text messaging, because I, I, I suspect that um, that guy was... Uh, was sleeping with one guy's girlfriend or something but I don't I don't know what happened there I can't you'll just have to watch it and see for yourself because honestly that would explain it um, that's what I told myself in my mind oh that must have been what happened there right but um, in in the end how things ended up I wasn't that thrilled about it also I think that part of the story could have used some tweaking but there was enough there that this, had it been um, executed properly, it should have made top of the stack with the story that they had, um, just with a little bit of tweaking. So it was a bit disappointing that way. Now I was going to talk about the last. Whoop, just dropped it. This case doesn't close that well. Um, the last seen in the last episode of the fifth season of The Art of the Crime. And it does leave it open for more. And I was saying, oh, I, I hope that they kill him off so that she can become the, you know, the legitimate uh, boss, because she's already the boss, you know, she's already doing the work. Uh, but. Um, and it's ridiculous that they would have a romance. But anyway, um, the last, just maybe just 10 seconds or something like that, of the, the last, maybe a little bit longer, but I, I, not very long, of, the, of this set. So beautiful. So beautiful. It was art. They managed to recreate a famous um, scene from a painting and wow, so beautiful and powerful and they really really ended this off well so whether they came out with more after this because i don't know i think it says um this was put out in 2022 so the last 
se season was 2021. So they might have come out with more, but I don't know. I haven't looked into it. But uh, if they no, I'm did, I'll watch I'm intrigued about what scene that was. Well, I can show you because it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's a, they, this was, they did a good job with this. I mean, it's just a TV show. There's some plot flaws. There's, it's corny, whatever, you know. But um, it's different. It's, I mean, it's not believable. Why are you having so many murders and stuff surrounding artwork? Is that how things are in France? I I find it hard to believe. The last <laughs> art crime was a, a fundamentalist Muslim who was uh, going to go into the Louvre and uh, destroy the Mona Lisa. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Anyway. Another uh, yeah. gift of Islam to civilization. They, they managed to stop the idea. I, I, they shouldn't have any great art work on this way. Well, yeah, it should all be reproductions, really. And it might very well be. I mean, that's that's what I would do if I were in charge. It would all be reproductions. And there's no no need for it to be the originals. Yeah. But uh, I want you to make I want to make clear to folks out there that uh, this is not a latter day kind of development the way the nifty shifty hefty lefties would have you believe and definitely have themselves believe uh, in a response to western aggression and stuff like that let's do a little bit of historical view Turkey's never been conquered by anyone much less a uh, western power um, the all but the rim of the, along the Red Sea of Saudi Arabia has never been conquered ever 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 and that was conquered by the Ottoman Empire Iran yeah kind of back and forth between the British yeah yeah so go ahead. back and forth between the British and the Russians uh, during the time of the great game but not really a colony um, China never conquered horrible brutish countries you know, so response ask the Indians ask the Indians what they think about uh, Muslim appreciation of civilization the Muslims burned down repeatedly I've been told by someone from the area Six times they burned down a, a, an observatory, they had a library. I'm hoping the guy's exaggerating, but it's at least once. That's in India, eh? India. That was a long time ago. Okay. So before you go making generalizations about, oh, you know, Islam means peace. Therefore, it's a peaceful religion. First of all, it doesn't mean peace. It means submission. It means surrender. When someone slaps a submission hold on you in wrestling, hopefully you're not into that sort of stuff. Professional wrestling. You're supposed to believe they're in trouble. No, that's all faked and that sort of stuff. The kind of submission that Muslims believe in. Not fake. And historically, they have imposed it on people. Submit or else. Turned into slaves, killed, whatever. Read your history. I know you're going, poo, oh, poo, poo, poo. No. Read your history. If you don't like reading it. Apparently, it's politically incorrect to ask someone who's uh, uh, talking benightedly about Islam. Oh, it's peace, love, and flowers. It's politically incorrect to ask them, have you read the Koran recently? No, if you read the Koran at all. In my experience with these folks that are talking peace, love, and flowers, well, every one of them haven't read the Koran. I can recall one academic, he came, he, it was in the library, I, he, he was making some crazy generalizations, and uh, a chemistry professor, former chemistry professor, 
And I, I asked, have you read the Quran recently? He was walking towards me. And he looked like he was drowning. Because he wanted to say he had. He might have read a few excerpts, you know, the equivalent of a few paragraphs and stuff like that. And he finally said no, he wanted to lie. And uh, said what he was saying was he feared militias more than Muslim uh, terrorists here in Canada, North America. That's fascinating. Because the Muslim population in Canada is 4%. And the the population militias would be drawing from is uh, um, the white majority. And it's more than 40%. What he's saying is, oh, you know, like uh, militias, presumably, militias are marginally more dangerous, uh, more of a danger. You know, I'm worried about the per capita danger. Because people are saying to Muslims, come on in, come on, you're peaceful people for a peaceful religion. That's the issue could be, I don't think so, that militias are more dangerous, more vicious. Militias are more vicious here in Canada, or more, uh, more relevantly in the United States. But uh, per capita, come on. You know, if, if you look at the uh, number of killings around the world, there's one website that reports at least to keep track of uh, killings uh, done you know terrorist type killings and uh, I was looking I was looking at it and they did have the occasional it was like listening I think month by month they had the occasion how much five minutes no like almost ten. Ten, but they had the occasional I was, oh, sorry. I was thinking I might talk about the my last stand okay so I'll finish this thought sure. up the occasional listening of uh, people that uh, their the names uh, seem to be uh, fascist or Nazi. But the vast majority of uh, terrorist-type killings around the world, according to this one website, I forgot the name, was Muslims and commies. So, you know, like, it, there, it's significant that Bertrand Russell, in the wake of the Russian Revolution, right after it, might have been 1918, he said, you know, the most closest approximation, and Bertrand Russell was a left wing some description or another. He said the most close the most close approximation, this is a little over a hundred years ago, of Bolshevism, that's what he called it, communism, is uh, you know that we can find in history is Islam. There you go. You know, you couldn't say that nowadays. It's a religion of peace. No, it's not. Uh, communism, incidentally, for some of you nifty shifty hefty lefties, is not a belief system of peace either. Get that straight. You know, read your Lenin. Lenin repeated sound by repeated sound chomp in his case. Revolutionary terrorism. Hmm? You guys, if you're a communist out there, I know you. You're terrorist stinkers. Okay. All right. So I was talking about um, a documentary called The Last Stand recently, and so I've written a little thing, turning the last stand into the first step towards sustainability. If you are an environmental activist with a passive personality, number one, marching behind someone providing a drumbeat should remind you of soldiers marching into battle. You must realize that you're at a disadvantage against your enemies. Do you follow the beat of the drum because you've lost hope that you will be successful in your fight? Perhaps seeing yourself as a martyr or of some sort? Perhaps just wanting to die with the nature that you love? When the nature that you love has died, was your death or energy spent for the cause wasted? Passive personality type shouldn't follow aggressive personality types. Number two, passive resistance against your enemies is better than parroting an aggressive propaganda shoving stupid marketing slogans. Oh my God. Rather than Worse doing than a sit-in where you're just wasting time vegetating, you should be sitting and learning or teaching. Go to your protest site armed with information. Research what you move, what moved you to join the group. 
prepare your lecture and teach others there. Each person there should have a turn at speaking. No leaders, all teachers. Information and this show of equality of each member of the group matter, mattering and having a voice will draw the cameras and more passive people to join your cause. Once you have amassed a group of lifelong learning teachers passionate about the nature that you have now become an active part of, your protest lessons can become more organized, say into a school, sustainably set within the nature that you love. Aggressive people won't lead passive people to a gentler future. Passive people who value learning and live sustainably as a part of nature will as soon as they decide not to allow themselves to be used by aggressive personality types. Be the change you like to see is a marketed slogan that often moves a passive crowd behind an aggressive propaganda shouting it. Is it the change you want to see? Passives following an aggressive dictator? Tourists pay to experience life on a farm for a weekend. When I first heard this, I, it seemed unbelievable. Who'd pay to clean out a stable? Yet some do. People pay a premium for weekend art retreats. More than, more for this type of immersive weekend art um, study than they do for a semester course at a university in many cases. People are clearly eager to pay to spend time in nature, especially in old growth forest. Once the old growth forests are gone, the opportunity for them to draw tourist slash student dollars as a natural old growth forest is gone too. The forestry dollars just provide short term income. Those old growth trees are worth far more standing and growing. The video la The Last Stand showed that many natives want the forestry dollars. Those forests can provide long term sustainable income instead. Natives get free education at Canada's universities. Why aren't those educated natives setting up private education centers on their land to attract tourist dollars rather than casinos? There are many tourists eager to pay to see educated natives who live sustainably as a part of nature in a natural setting. You don't have to put up casinos. No. It's such a flat. It's, uh, oh, man. It's, it's the it's really, image. It's a Ugh. bad image. And the corruption that will yeah. come with it, I can guarantee you. Uh, mafia type uh, types and gang types uh, are are contemplating if they haven't already moved in. It's a horrible look, and worse than that, it's a horrible practice. So, but I mean, here in Alberta, I don't know if this is the case. Presumably, the last stand was set in like a, I think it was Vancouver Island they were talking about for the most part. But uh, I mean, they were jumping back and forth talking about the Amazon and stuff too. So I'm not sure where all. But anyway, we've got to stop. You know, it is the last stand. We've got to stop uh, overpopulating Canada. You know, like we'll just be ripping down those forests to put up housing for all the folks coming in. Yeah, but, but there's no need for old growth forests to be going. They shouldn't be going. They shouldn't be. But you know, uh, it's, yeah. they're already forests that have been removed and trees planted for it. You know forest farms, I guess. I don't know what you'd call them. Canada should be looking um, to drop its population, not increase it. Yeah. Drop it. It was overpopulated. The place is overpopulated when the population was 20 million. I'm talking about the lower mainland of BC. It was overpopulated. Oh, I like I was... Uh, I, back in the... Around 1970, late 60s. I saw this uh, YouTube Southern Ontario, thing that they were trying to advertise um, Ontario as being having so few people and it's like okay yeah all the people are crowded like really crowded right along the south end of that like it's it's nobody wants to live up north so that's the thing about canada it's like there's a, no a livable band along the the south and that's yeah. for the most part that's where people live right british columbia is a little bit different but it's also it's it's, it's overpopulated for what um, for its topography, the, you know, it's mountainous, and you're not going to have people living way up on the mountains. You know, they're all so they live crowded in, down in yeah. the valleys, yeah, you know, along the valleys. You know, like uh, it's weird when you see communities. So many communities in BC, that we tend to think of communities as being kind of like circular. If you uh, study geographer uh, geography, what do they call crystaller patterns or something like that? Uh, you know, everything's based on a hexagon. A bunch of hexagons look like honeycomb, right? Uh, to explain location. You can't explain location that way in BC. 
at least on a micro level. You know, the, the towns, you, you might have one street that's the main street, and it just goes on and on and on. That's the Yep. Well, you have about five minutes or four minutes. minutes. Yeah, you can go. So ahead. yeah, we we've got to drop the population. Now people say, oh yeah, who's going to take care of you when you're old? The Japanese are working on robots. Yeah. Who's going to, you know, like my dad was killed by people who were in, uh, I'm not going to say from where, but from elsewhere, and uh, they. Uh, they uh, didn't uh, give him water overnight, and he uh, then they fed him too much water, and he had a heart attack. You know, he died within a 24-hour period, one the day before, confined to bed and wearing diapers and that sort of stuff. Nine, 99 and a half years old, and they weren't taking care of him. They took care of him, all right. They uh, allowed him to die. You know, like it wasn't allowing him to die. It's, I mean, it's like. If you didn't feed an infant, if you didn't give infant, an infant water or food, you wouldn't say, oh, you allowed him to die. You are complicit. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were complicit in their negligence. And I'd rather have a robot taking care of me than some idiot that's going to forget to give me water. Yeah. Shameful. Absolutely shameful. The whole place was uh, looked as though they'd been recruited from one particular uh, part of the world. There was one person, when I visited, strutting around without a mask. And my dad had caught COVID. This is a contributing cause. Had caught COVID earlier, that would have weakened it. You know, you're, who knows, he might have had the tachycardia syndrome. I don't think that's uh, good if you, if you uh, want to avoid a heart attack. So, you know, and of course they're going, our economy would crash. If we didn't have these folks coming in because we got so many people retiring, hey, hey, then, you know, if that's the case, I don't want any support for folks coming in from elsewhere. You see how that is? Yeah. Oh, let's give them this, let's give them that, this, that, and the other thing. I thought they were supposed to be helping out the economy, not draining. You see where uh, the nifty, shifty, hefty lefties, they get all caught up in their rhetoric. You know, oh, yeah, they're helping us out. You know, like, what would people do if they didn't have people uh, uh, acting as servants? Hey, that's in rich South California. We don't have people, uh, Latinos, doing our house cleaning for us. How many people do? Yeah. You know, who will who will be doing the? You know, like in fast food places like Subway or Taco Time. Who's going to be there? Well, usually it's people with a bachelor's degree, at least, serving uh, <laughs> food in Subway. I, I mean, don't honestly, know. Yeah, could be. So. But uh, you know, uh, degrees aren't that good. You know, mm -hmm. like if if you got a degree in the humanities, what use are you? Yeah. You know, it's it's like uh, folks say about uh, you know I've got a sibling who's got uh, who teaches. Um, at university, uh, English. And you know, like, I can remember saying to someone I was working with, he's a carpenter, uh, um, I bet I had a degree in English and was going for a degree in, in uh, history. He so said, I don't give a rat's ass. You don't know shit from Chinola. And he was being friendly, okay, relatively friendly. Okay, so. Uh, that's what uh, workers, real workers, think of these folks at university. You hear that? You nifty, shifty, hefty lefties from university that think you represent working class people? Hey, they see through you. If you're in the humanities or the so-called social sciences, the really anti-social pseudosciences, they see through you, don't know, you know what from Shinola. I'm signing off on that.